This is The Wedding Remix. The Wedding Remix, providing inspiration, education, and awareness of elite wedding professionals. Here's your host, Lizzie Liz, Jacob Fader, and Armando Cepeda. This is The Wedding Remix. Thank you so much for joining us here at The Wedding Remix. So glad to see you, hear you, wherever you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, or watching us on YouTube. We're so glad you could join us. We have an awesome show for you today with Jason Ree from Refined Company and Mike Sims from Hangar 21. And as always, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, follow us wherever you can, and help get the word out. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels for a chance to win a conversation, a one-on-one -on -one time with one of your favorite guests from The Wedding Remix. This is all about community, networking, and of course, inspiration, education, and awareness of the best in the wedding industry. Let's get into the show. Here we go. Our first guest is an immensely talented gentleman coming to you from The Refined Company. It's Jason Ree. We are honored to introduce the top wedding planner in Los Angeles, Jason Ree of Refined Events. With over a decade of experience in customer service, venue management, and event production, Jason's charismatic personality and humor puts not only the couple at ease, but also the creative partners on the big day. He is the CEO of Doing Events with Integrity, the Director of Celebrations, and Jason specializes in full service wedding and event planning. Jason believes that being creative and thinking outside the box are just a part of what makes a successful event. SoCal has named him the most high demand professional third wheel. Without further ado, please enjoy our conversation with Jason Ree from The Refined Company with our host, Lizzie Liz and Jacob Thader. I am so excited to Hi. interview you today with Jacob. We love your company, um, all the things you've been doing. We're so excited to share on our platform. We just want to say thank you for being part of the wedding remix. So these are like one liners. Okay, are you a morning person or a night owl? A night owl. Ties or bow ties? Ooh, ties. Skinny ties. <laughs> Skinny ties. Vest or cardigans? Oh, vest. Pants or kilts? Kilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite dance song? Cupid Shuffle. Ocean or City View? City View. Favorite venue to work at? Private venues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, private venue. <laughs> Easiest venue to work at? Hotel venues. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. Would you rather play it safe or take a risk? Risk. What has been your favorite destination for weddings? Ooh, Scotland. Do you prefer more flowers or candles? Florals. When it comes to photography, light and airy or dark and moody? Dark and moody. What's your favorite texture? <laughs> What's your favorite candle scent? Uh, lay candle scent. Ooh, cocktails or wine? Mocktails. I'm mm -hmm. not drinking, sorry. What's your go-to Korean restaurant? Parks. And last but not least, Del Taco or Taco Bell? There's like a Trump affiliation with one of them, so I like that one, but oh, okay. Del Taco. <laughs> You've always been in the hospitainment industry growing up. Can you share your journey with us? Uh, yeah, I uh, was a you know, failed actor gone successful wedding and event planner. So I've pretty much done every hospitality job imaginable. But my first job was actually Party City when I was like 16 and I was like a Halloween. Yeah, I was the Halloween expert. I had like an orange vest. So I was still rocking vests back then. That's and, why he likes um, cardigans now. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, you know, cardigan, it's just too spitzy with the cardigan. It's, it's all about a vest. But yeah, so then I uh, obviously kind of worked my way into the hospitality world, just kind of um, doing as much as I can and learning as much as I can. And then in about college, I think I kind of got bit by the wedding bug. And uh, my first wedding was with a bride that I had used to go raving with um, in high school. So we had kept in touch via MySpace at the time. I don't know how, I mean, I don't know if you know what that is, youngins, but that's uh, the, 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 the social platform prior to Facebook. Asian Avenue. And, <laughs> yeah. And then I moved up to LA and worked for um, SBE and did all the events for the bazaar and then did that for about two years and then relaunched my business. Man, that first bride must have been a very cool bride if you partied with her. She was, yeah, I mean, it was fun because we had such a history like doing that. And then a few years later, she had seen like um, that I was doing wedding education and stuff. So she asked if I would find her wedding and went ahead and did it. 
now we're here. Now we're here, and I'm at the wedding remix. Woo! <laughs> um, were your parents supportive of your career choice? They were. My parents were actually not very traditional um, Korean parents. My mom used to own a fashion boutique and my dad does, uh, owns a painting and construction business. So they're all a little bit more creative. And so they've always just kind of been supportive and making sure that, again, I'm happy. They, I kind of wish that they pushed me a little bit more to read books and pay attention in school because I definitely was not academic. So right now, as we're trying to learn so much about what's going on, it's very hard for me to try to learn at this age, but I am trying. <laughs> I am trying. But uh yeah, I'm not one of those people that like read books and stuff. I, I like to watch moving pictures. And shows. <laughs> so, yeah, but they've been very supportive. Oh, awesome. that's great. Um, in your journey, when did you finally feel like it was time to start Refined? So my first company was Ansi Entertainment. I was still in college. And then um, I started this company called In Good Company. And I actually ended up being in a lawsuit over it because someone else had that name. And... Um, I was devastated and I tried fighting it with like, you know, the several thousands of dollars that I was working at Cheesecake Factory, like as a server and I would like make money and work weddings on the weekends. And uh, I ended up saving enough and kind of getting a lawyer. And um, the person actually ended up stealing a lot of the identity of In Good Company, but they had a lot more money and a big executive team. So um, I eventually ended up just letting it go. And uh, cause they were going to basically allow me to have it in this city, but not in any other city. It was actually orange. They were allowing me to have it in orange County, but I couldn't expand. I couldn't do anything with it because they had at least filed a, 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 a trademark, but they didn't, but the record showed that I had my company for like two to three years before like domain, everything like that. So um, I went through like a really, you know, a rough week of just crying my eyes out. And then I'd always wanted my name in a business, but I never thought of what that name would be. And then I, was wearing bow ties at the time. And I just kind of landed on refined company one night. And uh, it was like the perfect way of using my last name. I love a pun. And so that's when I kind of started refined company. But truthfully, the reason I wanted to start my own company is because I had a hard time staying in companies that um, didn't keep the integrity of their business and didn't keep the integrity of the people. So like I would always be in situations where other employees would be unhappy or there'd just be a lot of like unfair things that would happen. And I'm just never one of those people that can deal with like the corporate structure of like not saying anything and like not pushing, you know, questions and things like that. So I had to start my own company and here we are in the magical 2020 where maybe my company will be here next year. Who knows? <laughs> um, how long ago was it that you started Refined? Um, I want to say, uh, I, I, th- I want to say it's, I relaunched my business, but basically Refined has been a brand for, I want to say since 2013, that's correct. I don't know. It might be on my LinkedIn somewhere, but I, 2013. And then aside from, you know, the initial name difficulties, what, what were some other challenges that you faced when first starting? I mean, I think the number one thing is just, there's always that like fraud mentality, right? So we're always just feeling really fraudulent with how we start a business or how we start any creative business. And as a solopreneur, especially the wedding industry, we're constantly learning by failing. So um, I think that was really hard for me to to deal with just because I I didn't like failing and I didn't like not knowing. But at the time, the resources were not as vast as they are now. We didn't have social media as, as we didn't even have Instagram at that time, I don't think. So we didn't really have all the resources that we have now. So a little bit of the challenge, I think, is just being like that solopreneur and being able to keep going and finances. I think financial stuff was really tough. So every time I would continue trying to work and like stick with growing my business, I would get an opportunity because of how hard I was working with my business that an opportunity would present itself and it would offer benefits and things like that. So I'd always kind of be, you know, distracted by those opportunities because it brought stability. Um, But every time I would join an opportunity and like, you know, walk away from my business, I would end up coming back a year or two later after seeing that they didn't honor the things that they would do just for the integrity purposes or the ethics of the company. Mm -hmm. Since you did a rebrand, what marketing strategies did you have to do to like let your audience know that, hey, this is still what we stand and this is like Jason 2.0? You know, I think the number one thing too with our industry is there was a point in time where we had to be so perfect with everything. And we kind of are still struggling, I think, with that, where everything has to be beautiful and everything has to be lovely. But I think 
Lizzie's you especially are really good at this, but we've kind of gotten into a point where we can really show our authentic self and like show kind of our, like, you know, you just show your day versus like a branded photo. So I think that has really transformed the way that we do business. And especially with the clientele that watch us or follow us, I think that was really, really uh, beneficial in any type of like restructure or rebrand in, in this like new space where people want to see you and people want to see who they're going to have to work with for a year versus all of the work that you do. Cause the work is, is more of like a, 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 a basically like a basic, like you good quality work if they want to be in this industry. So what is it that sets you apart from that? Um, so Jason, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from being a business owner? Um, winning through the woes. You have to understand that you're going to fail like a hundred and billion times. And, and unfortunately, unfortunately we are in the business of people. So things will change. And even with this situation going on in the world, we, we don't know what that's going to look like for us out of this, but obviously it's going to change the way that we obviously do business and the way that we entertain and celebrate. So I think just being able to be malleable and like giving yourself a little credit and grace and know that like, you know, you're being hired to basically make a machine perfect that is never going to be perfect. Um, so it's just about trying to do that with as much uh, stamina and ease and and grace for yourself. Because I think that's where we get ourselves in trouble is we do a lot of spiraling. And uh, I think we don't deserve that because we are good people. And we obviously want people to celebrate. I mean, we're, we're, we're basically in an industry where we're helping other people, you know, perfect that beautiful day. So a standard for us to try to make our do enough. Mm -hmm. What about what's been the most rewarding part of having your own business? <sighs> Being able to kind of be honest and own my own integrity with what I do and, and being able to say, you know, I think, I think this is not an opportunity for me or being able to walk away from an association that doesn't fit what you feel is right. And, um, trusting yourself to do that, uh, which I think obviously takes a lot of time to do it too. It took me many, many years to be able to say like no to a client or fire a client. So to be able to really like set that kind of, um, boundary for yourself. Yeah. And I know you work with a ton of different types of clients and you do lots of different types of events. How did you get into the market you're in? How did you get into the luxury market? Networking was really important because I think it just kept you top of mind with the, with the community that you're with. But I have to say with every opportunity that has led to like a client that was not a winning focus client or a really cool, exciting thing it had come from a relationship. So having kind of the idea that again, we've all worked so many jobs. So let's try to remember that each and every job you meet however many people. So those are all great opportunities for you to keep a relationship and, and truly network versus like going to a cocktail party or going to a venue opening. I think um, just understanding that like, again, relationships are there for a reason. And uh, hopefully that, you know, when your relationship thinks of an opportunity, they think of you because you've also given them, you know, many opportunities too. And that's kind of, the way my mind works is I have a lot of favors out there. So it's like, I'm excited to claim those favors when those times come, but you know, who knows, who knows if that time's ever going to come. But the idea is that we, you give opportunities and you try to refer as much people that you love and you care about. So the hope is that again, everything's reciprocal and you guys are constantly supporting each other. Well, you've done so many amazing events um, and social events as well. Can you tell us about your design process and planning process? I, Tradition, I, I typically love to do the venue scouting. Venue scouting is probably one of my favorite parts because that's really where you get the canvas and like the, the bare bones of what your design is. Um, but aside from starting with venue, I would say you really have to sit down with your couple and figure out what their ideas are. But I always like to preface with my couples, regardless of what money they have or what their budget is, tell me your dream scenario. I'm, getting, I'm not guaranteeing you I can create any of it. I'm not, I'm not telling you that at all but I just wanna know what you want if you didn't have the limitations of your budget. So that's usually a good starting point to really get there, but you also have a lot of couples that will um, not know what they want. And so you end up showing them like 10 different options to find out what they want. And that's also totally fine, um, depending on if you're charging for it or not. But like, I've had a couple, for example, that we looked at, we toured 32 venues wow. in like 
a month, like within maybe two weeks. It Which was a very short amount of time. Choosing? Yeah. Like the first one? Um, they, <laughs> the they, first they ended up picking, um, oh no, maybe not the first one, but it was one of the, it was one of like the top like yeah. eight that we had first seen. <laughs> but I remember there was like one venue day where we did like six venue appointments and I was like, Ooh. this is a moment. This is a moment. But yeah, um, For that client. <laughs> Yeah, but also like you know, at the time, like I really wanted to find that perfect space because just for me too, I, I like I'm not a typical I'm not like a planner that likes to kind of use the same template over and over again. I really do like to kind of start from the beginning, but that takes a lot more time. So like you'll see that with the pricing model of any company too, you'll see kind of the variance in that. If they kind of have like more of a cookie cutter way of doing their stuff, that's totally great too. Um, versus like more of a concierge level or more of a design that's completely couture from the beginning. Um, but yeah, so I think venues and also just obviously knowing your client and really getting all those ideas out. But you'll also get ideas that come halfway through. You also have couples that are like, actually, I don't want mason jars. And you're like, I told <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> I told you. So, Yeah. Everyone loves to learn the hard way. Yep. <laughs> I know why. Uh, but then also then I'm like, but we also are in an industry that is just really hard. So I, that's why I kind of always talk about how we love what we do and we hate that we love it is it truly is a, a difficult industry and we truly do magical work when you think about it. You're, you th- if you think about the whole process of weddings, the fact that couples have to hire professionals because they know their friends and family won't work or do as much as they should. So they have to find professional help to go out and actually create this like event that is focused on their love story. So I think kind of understanding that I realized like what we go into. And so we have to also just remember to honor the couple by honoring their family and being kind to everybody and just understanding that like, this is the day that they've invested in and you are part of their lives at this day. Um, But also making sure that you are not like being disrespected or you know compromising your integrity by doing it we hope you're enjoying this episode and now a quick word from our sponsors it's all about the experience encore entertainment's premier level showmanship and talent is guaranteed to create a -a one-of-a-kind experience for your event encore has provided award-winning entertainment to some of the most lavishly designed events worldwide and is equally celebrated as a trusted source of talent amongst the elite in the event industry Encore provides incredible live music for extraordinary events with a continuous variety of evolving live and virtual music options. Connect with the Encore team and begin creating the soundtrack for your next live or virtual event. Visit us at EncoreXP.com. And now let's get back into our interview with Jason Ree from The Refined Company. Uh, So Jason, you've been recognized as one of the top planners in Southern California. What sacrifices have you had to make to get to that position besides no sleep and constantly saying yes to a lot of things you feel like you didn't have to say yes to? Um, I'm single, so there's that. And um, I have a different waist size every year. (laughs) So I think think I've kind of compromised my own health a lot just because, again, I think being a solopreneur, there's a lot of challenges just trying to make it. But, you know, I don't really feel like I've given up too much because I really do love what I do. Um, Even now when I'm kind of realizing that our industry has a lot of work to do in terms of diversity and inclusion and actually meaning what they say um, and not being performative, I think, um, you know, I think I've been very lucky and I feel very grateful that I got to be in an industry that celebrates my um, flamboyantness and celebrates me and celebrates me being an artist. And I think that's the best and I guess the best advice I have to give about that is just making sure that like you are viewed as an artist as much as you are viewed as like a vendor. It's like none, we are all artists in what we do. And when you're creating something from lighting, staging, like floral to even like, you know, something more simple, like valet, I feel like everything has to do with time and your skill and your service and how you talk to people. So it's really not just labor. It's like, we're really putting in the work to make your day better. So like that, if you really think about that mentality, it's kind of amazing that we're able to find people that care enough to do it. Yeah. And you mentioned like a scullery team, like a scullery team. Like that's, it's amazing. Yeah. But we need it. And without, without the scullery team, we wouldn't have any food. No, there's so many different hands that go into a wedding. Yeah. Um, So you briefly mentioned that you feel as though there's a lot of work that this industry needs to do um, to continue progressing from where we are today. Can you go into that in a little bit more detail? 
Yeah, I think we're, you know, I think we're obviously, our industry mirrors a lot of what is happening in the real world. So a lot of our, you know, inspiration in movies and inspiration in fashion trickle into the wedding industry. But I think one thing that we've all kind of been maybe, again, we've been in an industry that I think has been way, working way above um, the bandwidth. So I feel almost like we've kind of all been grinding. So we haven't even had an opportunity to really look around in the room and, as we kind of are dealing with this Black Lives Matter movement and and understanding what that really means, um, I think we're, we've done kind of a disservice to the Black community with the wedding industry. We haven't really given them the opportunity to, you know, to show themselves. And there, there's a huge Black, excellent group of wedding professionals that we just didn't know because, again, we barely give them the opportunity. And a lot of the associations aren't focused on true diversity. So I think a lot of them don't join that association. So knowing that kind of stuff, I think has been really um, mind blowing for me. Cause again, I grew up in Orange County, started my business in Orange County, where again, it was a predominantly white, um, white Caucasian, however the politically correct way of saying it is, um, you know, so I think knowing kind of that, I think that's just been a big, big focus for me in the last three months is just kind of acknowledging it, knowing where I, my privilege is being a Asian uh, professional knowing that we kind of have been the one minority that got to be accepted quicker. And um, we still have obviously a lot of things going on with us too, specifically right now with, with uh, not my president, but a president going around and saying, you know, really crazy things about Asian people. So I just think that um, all of our cultures is so um, important when it comes to weddings and people want the dollars of every single culture that we have from Asian weddings to black weddings. And even with that crazy rich um, Asian movie with that wedding scene and being that would be that, that being one of the biggest talks of, of our industry, I think, you know, we just have a lot to do in terms of really making it inclusive. And what does that mean? That means that we need to not only respect the the other people, but also like support and find ways to amplify them. And I think um, we can all do a little bit better with that. I think every association needs to really look at their members and look at their board and look at their, you know, international board and look at and see how diverse it really is. And if it's not diverse, why is it not diverse? And if you want to have a, you know, if you want to create a committee, is that enough for you to actually make the difference? If you have a publication, like just making sure that you support what's going on, I think is also something that a lot of us are doing and then a lot of us are doing it performatively where they did the black square and then a lot of us are not doing anything at all so you know it's disheartening and it hurts because I love a lot of these people that I just see doing nothing but the only thing I can continue to do is do what I feel is right which is you know speaking out and making sure that you kind of support the industry and the full industry because again I think it's so silly that we're struggle with this as an industry that's focused on people like we're people driven love driven industry and we have you know we have a little problem with diversity and the opportunities that we give to other people and I think um, speaking for myself as an Asian American we were kind of raised to want to be at the table full of white people and being at a table full of white people meant that you were successful so really having to like work deep down and figuring out like where where you could do better and how you even got to where you are because again I I'm, I'm a gay, like, you know, my hair, I'm like usually the most creative and the most like eccentric person. So I really like accept everybody, but I also realize how much I could do um, and do more of to, to really support what's going on. So I think all of us should be paying attention to Black Lives Matter. All of us should be understanding what the wedding industry has failed to do, which is support the black community. And then with that, it's also making sure that Asians are represented properly and the LGBTQIA rep is represented properly. I think those are all very crucial. And if you're a publication and you want to make money off of our community or you're an association that wants to charge members uh, membership to support the community, you really have to do that. And if you see it and you feel like it's not there, then ask the question. You're allowed to, especially if you're a member, if you are in the community, like there's nothing wrong with asking a question. And I think that's where you'll see if the answer is short, curt, dismissive, then you begin to really unravel things where you're like, wow, this, this is really a deep rooted issue. If we're talking about systemic racism. It's pretty much intertwined with capitalism and business and work. And we all kind of have this American dream. So making sure we really, you know, make sure that the American dream includes all of us. I think that's like um, what has been really like lit in terms of 
my, my passion right now. I'm, yeah. I just want to make sure that we're really being equitable and fair. Um, and it feels like we're not. Yeah. Um, so how has being involved in different professional organizations in the past helped your business? It's the relationships. Like I said, it's, um, it's having relationships that also give opportunities, but it's also having those relationships to lean on when you are just having a moment and you are just wanting to, you know, spiral and do all the things. I think no one really understands what our industry goes through unless you're in the industry or you've worked in hospitality. And um, so I think having friends, it's, it's like kind of the way I felt about when I was waiting tables at restaurants, like having that like team and that community, we always called it, I always called it the Titanic or like, we knew we were going to hit an iceberg. So if you hit that iceberg, like you need to find the band, like you need to find your band, the people that are going to continue playing while like, you know, the client gets on a lifeboat and then the venue person gets on a lifeboat and you're like, okay, well that's fine. Cause we're here. And like, we're just going to keep playing until this ship goes down. And I think having that kind of commitment to, um, and having the, the band, that team with you, I think is super important. So I think that's been the best part of being in any group or association. It's just building your, your uh, contact base of, of true supporters of you and not just people that are looking to profit off of you and not people that are just being opportunists. It's like finding true people that are loyal and dedicated. And that's, I think, how you make your vendor team. That's how you make an amazing group of creative partners that you know you'll kind of trust. And if you mess up on something, then you also can be like, oh my God, like, can you fix this? Or like, can you send out another steak? Cause I ate it. Like whatever it is that you need to do. Um, you know, I think that's very important. So that's really the best part I think you get out of it. And then just learning from other people. Cause again, we're, we all have different skill sets and we all have experienced different failures and stuff. So being open and honest about it too. I think our industry is so good at like making it seem like everything's okay. So I'd like to be very transparent about like how we are doing, like, I have no clients, you know, but I am taking inquiries now, but we weren't taking inquiries at the beginning because we took the three months and we were like, we don't, we can't, we can't forecast what this looks like. So it's just being up and honest about where you are too. I think you'll find a lot more people in your position than you feel, um, than you worry about like being ostracized or being alone. I mean, I think all of us are stuck in the exact same position in this industry. Yeah. So you shouldn't yeah. be scared to talk about it because we're all going yes. through it. Yeah. And if anything, you'll find more of your community that way. You'll find more people that are like, like-minded and Comfort. feel the exact same way. Yeah. And if you find the ones that don't, then those can, you know, be cut and bye. They can go down with the ship. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I love what you said though, about finding your, finding your Titanic band. Yeah. That is yeah, that's, awesome. I like think that so much. And that came from the restaurant world for me. Like when I worked in restaurants, it was pretty much that experience every night we knew like clocking in, we knew that we were getting on the ship and we knew that like that it felt a little chilly that day and there was like not enough life vests and like we kind of go into that mentality. So I'm always like, do I want to be Kathy Bates and get on a lifeboat or do I want to play <laughs> on the band, you know? And I love Kathy Bates, but um, I definitely try to be the band all the time. The band leader. <laughs> yeah, not even the band leader. I can just, I, I'm happy being the band as long as <laughs> it makes it look like the band looks amazing. Like I'm, I'm totally fine being being second chair or whatever you call it in a band. <laughs> so I, I know it's a bit difficult to kind of talk about the future and what you're hoping, especially with what's going on, but what's next for Refined? Um, how do you see yourself navigating the next couple months, the next couple years, and what are some of your goals? Um, biggest goal, again, I think is being thoughtful with what we do. So really being thoughtful with our business, making sure that we're taking care of our clients and our clients are happy um, I think is the number one thing. So trying to be thoughtful with that, but also making sure we're making choices with our business and um, that doesn't compromise the integrity of what we believe in and uh, being honorable to that and being genuine to that. So that's really the biggest focus, but I think we're very excited because I'm obviously working on different media projects and, and trying to find other additional ways of, of streams of income, which is something that all of us should be thinking about. But Aside from that, I really just want to try to use my voice and my platform, um, my little micro influence to try to do as much as I can to, you know, keep pushing the, the needle to get to the where we need to be with our industry and hoping that as I do that, I'll continue building more people that believe in the same thing. And that way, again, I'll be surrounded by a group of people that believe that and that'll become the community. Um, so that's really the biggest goal. I think business wise, I just, I still want to be able to do great work and, as of right now, I don't know what that looks like because I'm not really, I can't really do micro weddings unless it's not, unless it has a bigger micro, not, not a micro budget, right? So 
I think just making sure that again, if you can take it on and you can manage it, then you should do it. But um, for us, we, we just want to try to be as thoughtful and make really, really conscious decisions. Cause again, I don't want to walk clients into a, a disaster and I definitely don't want to lie with the city and try to do an event for 300 people outside and like dealing with some of the stuff that I've been seeing. So we really want to try to be thoughtful with everything. Well, Jason, we appreciate your time. We had so much fun learning about you. Is there anything else that you want to share about yourself or your business, what you're up to? No, I think um, just, you know, thank you for having me. And I'm so happy that you guys are doing this. And and again, I, I love both of you and I love what you do and you're both so passionate. So um, I'm just grateful that I get to be in a community with you guys. So um, thank you so much for letting me be, you know, be able to ramble on here. Yeah, thank you for your support. We appreciate you and we can't wait to yes. see what's next for you. Thanks, Jason. No, and I love your set. Ooh, Beautiful set. So do we. Set designers, yes. <laughs> Lighting on point. Well, after, AV, great. <laughs> after quarantine, we hope to have you back as a guest. Um, yes. And hear more about what you're up to. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This week's venue spotlight is at the Fairmont Grand Del Mar, where romance and grandeur live happily ever after. Nestled in San Diego's Los Penasquitos Canyon Preserve, Fairmont Grand Del Mar offers a wide array of enchanting settings for your special day. Recite your vows on the manicured area lawn, surround yourself in elegance with the Manchester Salon and Terrace, or create a sense of theater in the Elizabeth Ballroom, or in the storybook locale of the Capella Chapel. A similar breadth of experience is available for your reception, from expansive ballrooms and sun-drenched pavilions to intimate wine-inspired private dining rooms. The Fairmont's acclaimed culinary team creates dishes as delicious as they are diverse. And your perfect day is made complete with Fairmont Grand Del Mar's wedding specialist. With one-of-a-kind spaces, impeccable planning, and unrivaled attention to detail, a wedding at Fairmont Grand Del Mar is nothing short of exquisite. Hosting only one wedding per day, they provide complete exclusivity to each bride and groom. Their full attention is devoted entirely to each couple on their wedding day to not only make it special, but to make it grand. The Fairmont Grand Del Mar is currently offering elopement packages for the remainder of 2020. If you haven't experienced this amazing property, you owe it to yourself to dine, enjoy a round of golf, and of course, have a day at the spa. Our next guest is Mike Sims from Hangar 21. Mike Sims is part of a family owned and operated venue in Fullerton, California called Hangar 21. Mike has some great stories to share about how the venue got started and what it takes to run such a unique venue. So please enjoy our conversation with Mike Sims from Hangar 21. Mike, welcome to our podcast, The Wedding Remix. We are so excited to interview you in here about Hangar 21. Thanks for having me. Congratulations again on winning California Wedding Day on the woo -woo. <laughs> best new venue, right? Well, yep, yep, two years in a row. So we got it for the executive this year. Um, but I know we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Awesome. Perfect. So we're going to just do a fun speed round. So it's just like one liners. Okay, okay we're, gonna get, we're just going to dive right in. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. How do you start your day? Oh, how do I start my day? Um, usually with a monster. You got to wake up and get that energy. <laughs> what, which um, flavor? <laughs> usually, oh, raspberry. A raspberry tea. 100%. Absolutely. Um, you know, scroll mindlessly through TikTok. Yeah. Uh, refuse to get out of bed till the last second. And then rush out the door to whatever I need to get to. <laughs> you know, I, I, would love, I would love to believe I live in, live in a world of doing yoga in the backyard before my day starts, but... Not the case. You get a lap in, in the pool. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can watch that on TikTok. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And how do you end your day? What's like a perfect end of the day of a long day? Monster, <laughs> TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Repeat, yeah, yeah, just repeat. Yeah. Rinse, yeah, rinse and repeat. Just, um, honestly, I would say chilling in the jacuzzi. That's like my, my go-to location just to kind of decompress at the end of the day yeah. and just relax and take it all in. We call it the Mikey Mike Spa. <laughs> where's, <Absolutely. laughs> where's the best place to get chocolate chip cookies oh uh patty cakes patty mm -hmm. cakes actually right down the street from the hangar we have them here for desserts a lot of the time during events but patty cakes oh, right shout out street. to patty that cakes sounds dangerous. <laughs> they, have the, they have the absolute best chocolate chip cookies <laughs> what's your favorite ride at disneyland 
gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I just think I think it's like one of those rides that no matter you know how many times you go on it, you still get that stomach drop yeah. sensation. It's like it's always amazing. Name three food items you always have to get at Disneyland. Oh, I'm gonna go with Dole Whip. I'm gonna go with the churro. And then probably something from Bengal Barbecue, something on a skewer. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mike Tommy. Or, or corn dog. I'm gonna uh, go no, four on that one. Yeah. Or corn dog. Yeah. <laughs> Corn dog's yeah. classic. Yeah. Mike taught me that you can um, order food on the app so you don't have to wait. Wait for mm -hmm. anyone? Do you have to have a pass or anything? Um, no, you can just download the app and then wow, a lot of places do like, like mobile order. 45 minutes yeah. sometimes. Absolutely. Like in some of those spots. Oh, yeah. um, do you prefer pants or shorts? Shorts. You, shorts. <laughs> Absolutely shorts. Ocean These calves were not built for pants. <laughs> <laughs> if you have it, you got to flaunt it. Absolutely. Oceanside or poolside? Uh, poolside. Absolutely. Fishing or golfing? Golfing. I can't stand fishing. No? I'm sorry to my fishing aficionados out there. Um, uh, cooking or barbecuing? Uh, probably barbecuing. Name something you Absolutely. hate doing but you have to do. Uh, unloading the dishwasher. Oh yeah, that's the worst. That is, that's not a fan. Put it off until the last minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Driving or flying? Oh, flying. Of course. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what is something you wish you could learn? Um, I would love to learn how to play the piano. Ooh. Have you started at all? No, not at all. Well, you it's just one of those kind of visions of like, <laughs> like wouldn't that be amazing? It's never too late. No, I've never even started. What's I would just love to be walking through a Nordstrom's and but sit and just down at the piano and go for it. <laughs> yeah. you know? and then have Doesn't everyone want that know? moment in life? <laughs> you could just learn one song. Really, yeah, really exactly. well. One song yeah. really well yeah. and then just sit Absolutely. at that piano at Nordstrom's. <laughs> play it over okay. and play, over. Play and it over and over, over again. Over. <laughs> um, what's your favorite late night snack? Oh, uh, Oreos. Mm. Milk and Oreos. Milk and That's Oreos. A go and what's your ideal day off look like? Chilling by the pool. Yeah. Doing absolutely nothing, even though most likely I'll find something to do, but With try to just decompress by the pool. <laughs> there you go. You got it. You got it. You got yeah. it. And then last but not least, what qualities are you looking for in a partner? Oh, um, someone adventurous, mm -hmm. um, somebody spontaneous. Yes. Yep. Um, and just somebody I get along with, Aww. you know, in it for the long haul. So got to make sure you're, you're compatible, yep. you know, yep. be adventurous. I think I tend, like, I tend to be the more reserved. Uh -huh. So you got to have the ying to your yay. Yin. Oh, you know? I like that. Huh. Tell us about yourself and how you got into the hospitality industry. Well, I kind of, I would say I kind of fell into the industry. Okay. Um, I never, you know, I, I didn't grow up thinking this is where I was going to end up at all, but I think I kind of just found my way here. So mm -hmm. I originally went, uh, you know, graduated high school, jumped into college right away. Um, originally was looking to pursue a career in medicine. Mm -hmm. um, about halfway through college, my dad started to get into the aviation uh, industry and, you know, he really wanted to start flying again. Yeah. Um, he had flown when I was younger, but, you know, wanted to fly kind of when I was older. And so we kind of started here, here at the airport doing some aviation work yeah. and then um, acquired some facilities that were beneficial in the sense that like we could host some events in them. Um, they were good size, you know, could get a lot of people in there. So we kind of started doing events. Now we didn't know if it was going to go anywhere. We just kind of were doing, um, you know, an event here, an event there, you know, somebody would say, Hey, I know you have the space. Can we kind of do something? Um, and then we kind of got the ball rolling and noticed like, hey, this is a this is an industry. This yeah. is a big deal. Um, so we started with Hangar 21 North. Uh, we no longer have that facility, um, but that's kind of where we got our bearings and learned kind of about the industry. And then we acquired Hangar 21 South, where I'm at today. Um, and this is kind of where things really took off yeah. and really. So so yeah, I didn't I didn't have any intentions of ending up here. Um, but I think that's kind of what it's all about in life. Like, 
you never know where you're going to end up, but if you kind of just let things lead you in the right direction, uh, you end up where you kind of need to be. Yeah. So what exactly gave you the idea of doing events in a hangar? So we had, we, We've had, we had many people come through our doors. We started off as like helicopter tourism. So mm-hmm. there was a huge to- turnover of guests coming in to take flights of LA, Orange County. Yeah. Um, and we had had some small gatherings here and there. Um, we actually owe a lot to Chris over at AV. Um, he actually came by for an event. Um, and, or actually, he didn't come by for an event. I, I forget what he came by from. Uh, but he kind of was like, Hey, this is kind of a cool space. You guys should rent this place out for events. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. No problem. You know, sounds good. Um, and then we kind of started actually hosting, um, events in our hangar over there. And so we were able to kind of get the ball rolling with hangar 21 North, um, start hosting events, start creating relationships in the industry and held strong there for a while. And then we ended up acquiring Hangar 21 South as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is kind of where, like I said, things really expanded. Yeah. Um, but I think just seeing the need for it in the market, we're a super unique location. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not many people that, you know, there's not many venues at an airport with helicopter rides and everything like Definitely that. Not. Um, so just seeing when you can fill a gap in the industry, mm-hmm. I think that's where you can find like a lot of success. Yeah. How long ago did you guys originally acquire the hangar? Um, so we started here at Fullerton Airport in 2016. Okay. Um, we started with Hangar 21 North. That's where we kind of got the ball rolling with, hang- with tourism and events. Um, we acquired Hangar 21 South in December of 2017. Mm-hmm. And we did about a year's worth of renovations to the space oh, wow. um, to get it ready for events. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really, that was kind of the beauty of it, though, is... Everything we learned about how an event operates at Hangar 21 North, we were able to build into Hangar 21 South. Yeah. So you need, you know, you should have a designated ceremony space. You should have a nice yeah. place for cocktail hour, you know, nice transitions through the facility. All of that we were able to kind of build in with the knowledge we had. Um, so I think it really kind of helped us out in the long run, kind of getting started on one side of the airport and then really kind of perfecting it with yeah. South. Well, it's so impressive that you guys just opened in 2016 and 2017, mm-hmm. and you're already voted best new venue up there. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, it's exciting. We love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. A lot of hard work goes into it. I can tell. A lot of hard work. So what exactly is your role at the hangar then? Um, so pretty much director of operations. Um, I handle kind of um, from setup to teardown, um, I mean, you know, make sure the, the facility is maintained. I also do a lot of work on the helicopter portion of our of our business. Um, so me and my cousin, Samantha, kind of work together to juggle uh, the venue side and the helicopter side of things. So I tend to be kind of the helicopter expert on things, especially pertaining to events. Um, and then she handles more day of and touring with couples and coordinators and stuff like that. Um, so we've able to kind of found a good balance with it. Yeah, and when you say that you handle more of the helicopter side of things, what exactly do you mean? Mm-hmm. So we, we're a charter company, we're a tourism company. Um, you know, while Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays are booked here for events, everything during the week and weekends are, you know, we're sending couples off to sunset rides in, you know, LA and we're sending a couple down to San Diego in a charter flight for a business meeting um <clears throat> so kind of just handling the logistics of that there's a lot of behind the scenes with helicopters and maintenance and scheduling and everything like that mm-hmm. uh, that goes on so i kind of handle handle that and then just the the setup and preparation of the facilities for events and kind of maintaining maintaining the space during the events uh, the occasional accident in the bathroom or yeah. the <laughs> glitch with the av system or just stuff like that jack of all trades <laughs> Absolutely. You got to be, yeah. you know, you got to be like, you're never, you're never too good for any job. Oh, um, yeah. You know, you know, even, you know, being one of the owners, I still have to be willing to clean a toilet. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's what makes it, you know, we're a family operation. We're not some big corporation that doesn't care about your event and is just, you know, turning and burning weddings mm-hmm. to make a buck. You know, we're, we're invested with you as you're invested with us. Oh, that's great. Uh, so you mentioned that your dad had his flying license. Do you have your flying license? Are there any plans for that? I don't. No, there are plans for it. Um, I want to get going here shortly, um, trying to kind of ride through this tumultuous time we're yeah. kind of going through. Uh, but hopefully hopefully on the tail end of this, um, I'm able to jump behind that pilot, pilot seat and get going here. Nice. I'd love to carry on the legacy once he hangs up his oh, pilot. Wow. We're, we're excited to fly with you one day. 
So going back to something that you just mentioned, it is an active hangar during Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when events are happening? Well, not an active hangar, but Absolutely, an active yes. runway? Absolutely, yeah. So we are at Fullerton Municipal Airport. Um, it's open 24-7. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no Southwest Airlines landing here. There's no <laughs> jumbo jets landing here. A3. Um, a lot of Cessnas, a lot of, exactly, exactly. A lot of Cessnas, a lot of smaller planes. Um, so nothing that causes too much of a noise disruption yeah. during a ceremony or a speech or anything like that. Uh, but enough for people to enjoy. Um, ah. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing better than going down to the beach and seeing a boat go by so it's kind of the same at the airport you know you're at the airport you want to see a plane take off yeah uh, the kids kids absolutely love it and I once you it. get 250 people yeah exactly yeah once you get 250 people inside the facility they end up making more noise than the airport does yeah, yeah. so they're able to kind of cancel out that concern um but we do we get that question a lot you know people tour the facility and they have those concerns uh, but it's just about educating them on you know how unique the space is and how you, you know, your, your guests are going to love it. You know, your guests are going to love seeing planes take off. And, um, it, it happens, it happens so minimally, especially at night, um, that it doesn't become too much of a factor. So we haven't had too much of a problem with it. Everyone enjoys it. That's why they, that's why they book us. That's why they come here. Was it a challenging transition, um, to like hangar 21 into like a turning it into a venue space? Hangar 21 North um, was, again, that's kind of where we started on the, the, the airfield. And that was, that was a, a 5,000 square foot empty hangar. Mm -hmm. um, so that was tricky. That was how do you make an empty hangar an event space? How do you create a space for a bride to get ready? How do you create a space for restrooms? Where do you put the caterers? How do you keep people contained? How do they enter the airfield? That was tricky. Mm -hmm. Now, when it came to Hangar 21 South and building it to all of our needs, it made it a lot more seamless for mm -hmm. us, for sure. Um, what are some struggles owning a venue? What are the headaches you go home to and you and oh, you and I, Rob okay, I mean, <laughs> talk about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the headaches are as little as as minimal as you know the outlet that the DJ was supposed to put the plug into wasn't getting power to it. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we fix that? Like, you know, the small minute stuff to the biggest of overhead, you know, there's, there's a lot of overhead to owning a facility, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, a finite location that, you know, you can't just put away and, you know, put it in your closet and pick up something else, but it's, you always take it home with you. Um, and one of the, one of the trickier parts of being the venue is everything from a from a guest experience standpoint everything kind of falls back on the venue mm -hmm. you know it's it's you know maybe it was a maybe it was a family friend that was DJing that night and they weren't that good and somebody said yeah i went to a i went to a wedding at hangar 21 and it was boring the music was terrible yeah so you end up everyone you invite into your home becomes a reflection of your home mm -hmm. um so so when when it comes time to kind of like recommend vendors and stuff like that we always love to recommend people we've worked with before and kind of have have shown to be a good representation of what our home is um because that's kind of you know guests take it away with them at the end of the no matter no matter what the vendor is they, it was at Hangar 21, and that always kind of sticks with people, for sure. Yeah. Obviously, there's a ton that goes into maintaining every single venue. What are some of the things that you have to do with Hangar 21 to keep it event ready? Never let it not be event ready. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's really the trick of it. What um, are some of those things? The, the second, the second of a, an event is over, you, you know, get those tables striked, get the floor clean, get the bathrooms restocked, get the parking lot swept, get everything hosed down, you know, get the chairs ready for the next event. Um, and really, really, you know, it's, it's the little things from repainting, repainting a scuff on the wall, yeah. you know, that somebody created during that, during that event. There are so many venues out there that start off, you know, the, the most beautiful facility ever, but without maintenance and without maintaining them. It goes downhill facility it just starts to fall and people just kind of let them fall sometimes um so it never it never stops you know um i got guys right now on the scissor lift um cleaning our speakers and cleaning our lights wow, our lighting units great. and wiping down the windows uh -huh. um so it's just always about maintaining the facility and you know making it making an event ready and making it tour ready 
Um, most of our tours, 99% of our tours are scheduled and pre pre-planned. Mm -hmm. um, but we do get the casual person who knocks on our front door and says, Hey, I was driving by, you know, my daughter's getting wed married next year. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, you know, I heard you guys are a cool venue. Can I take a look real quick? Always ready. Um, and if you, if you have the mess from the night before still yeah. out, is that the best representation of your, your facility? Mm -hmm. The answer is no, obviously. Is there um, anything, so just, is okay. there anything that's unique about the hangar specifically that might not otherwise have to be done in another venue, like upkeep on the door or, I don't, I don't um, know. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Anything unique to the space. Um, nothing really, nothing really unique to the space as far as maintaining the facility. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we have, we have, you know, oil droppings from helicopters that are stored inside oh, yeah. that, you know, it's like little stuff like that, that have to get, get cleaned up when the helicopters get pulled out. Uh, because that always, that always blows people's mind. The, yeah. the space that an event takes place is also where we put our aircraft at the end of the night. Uh -huh. You know, as the DJ's packing up for the night, I'm wheeling a helicopter back into the facility. Wow. Um, and that oh, always kind of mind boggles people. Oh man, I don't. I don't even want to carry my emergency kit up the stairs. At the end of the day. I can't imagine bringing a helicopter in. Yeah, it's. Oh yes, no. It is absolutely. You know, at, at one a.m. pushing a helicopter into the hangar is yeah. not is not the fan favorite, but it's got to be done. So we get it done. Um, but I think another tricky another tricky kind of component of being at a hangar is it is perceived as an indoor space mm -hmm. um you know but but in reality we're an outdoor covered facility uh -huh. um, yeah you know one of our hangar doors opens up all the way and we're pretty much missing an entire wall of our facility yeah. mm -hmm. um so you do get you do get the the leaves that blow into your hangar yeah. and that's you know dust and everything like that so I'm pretty sure we sweep the place every day, um, and by the end of the day, there's, exactly. And by the end of the day, there's still leaves in there, and um, and so just kind of just kind of having it having it feel like a a pristine indoor space, mm -hmm. while it's still having to function as a hangar for helicopters mm -hmm. and maintenance and it never know, stops. stuff like that. Never, never stops. stops. That's the goal, at least, right? Yeah. Never stop. So you mentioned the North and South hangar. Uh, <laughs> I know that there's the executive. Is that yes. one of the hangars? So um, the executive is kind of our new baby. Um, as we as we saw away with hangar 21 North, um, we kind of needed to, you know, she needed to be replaced. Yeah. We, need, we needed to find something to kind of fill that void. Um, so, hang, so the executive hangar is also here on the airfield. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a 20,000 square foot facility. Um, so it's really good for your large corporate events, mm -hmm. large weddings, large gatherings, speaking panels, car shows, um, kind of stuff like that. So it's very different in its purpose from Hangar 21 South, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's no there's no real sense in creating two facilities on the airfield that serve the same purpose. You know, a wedding of 250 and under, you know, that you just end up being your own competition on the airfield. Yeah. <laughs> um, so having a space having a space that's 20,000 square feet where the the options are absolutely limitless for any company to come in and do whatever expo they need to do in there um, has been has been a huge blessing. We have a lot of aircraft that get stored in there, mm -hmm. so we can leave as many as necessary to kind of fill your event. Um, if you have a corporate event with 150 guests and you have no idea how to fill 20,000 square feet of space with 150 guests, we can leave two of the Arca jets place. in there. Put um, a carousel and in there. Exactly. <laughs> fill up. Exactly. Exactly. The, really, really, the options are absolutely limitless yeah. with that one. Um, so that's super fun. And it's really fun to, to see how people interpret the space and what they decide to do with it. Um, and again, it's, it's still in its infancy. And hopefully once we get through, you know, what's going on right yeah. now, uh, we'll be able to really see it push to its potential and mm -hmm. see some awesome operations in there. Yeah. So how many people can you fit inside that 20,000 square foot executive? Absolutely. So for a seated dinner, we can do up to 900 guests. Wow. Uh, corporate style cocktail and utilization of the outside space, we can do about 2,500. That's wow. amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so events where people are bussed in from hotels after they've, you know, gone to a conference all day, drop them off and enjoy, enjoy a night of partying away um, with 1500 of your close friends. Um, that's really kind of what that, that facility is for. Mm -hmm. um, there's not many places in Southern California where 2500 people can get together. 
Um, so again, it was it's about filling that void in the market, um, and hopefully, hopefully, it pays off. Hey there, please make sure you like, share, follow, subscribe, and help us get this amazing content out to other creative professionals in the wedding industry. Let's help each other grow and inspire each other during these times. And now a few words from our sponsor. To Be Designed is San Diego's most unique and custom rental design house. TBD creates memorable moments by creating things their clients wish existed. To Be Design started with offering unique selections of event rentals and it is still the cornerstone of the business. From sofas to dining to custom bars, they have everything you need to bring your event to life. They are constantly updating the inventory to stay fresh and unique. Be sure to check them out at tbdsandiego.com. We hope you're enjoying this episode. And now let's get back to our interview with Mike Sims from Hangar 21. What's like the customer experience that you're hoping for as soon as they walk through that, or as soon as they hit the parking lot? Uh, okay, so I would say I would say the the experience that I'm hoping for is somebody's jaw to drop the entire tour. Uh, <laughs> first, um, first you know, we always you. try to. First they see you. And then they see your dad. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, so I think really, really creating memories in them and helping them bring an event to life. Mm -hmm. um, we are exclusive with Jay's Catering, so there's a lot of there's a lot of portions that kind of flow together, and it's about educating a client on how the entire process is going to work and mm -hmm. who's going to help you with your catering portion and who's going to help you with your venue portion. Um, as you guys well know, you know the wedding planning process can get insanely overwhelming yeah. very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so you spend as much time as possible with educating your client um, and telling them about about things they need that they don't know they need. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest one of the biggest blessings I think a client can do for themselves is hiring a full planner. Yeah, they always think that's the that's you know that's the no, it's not in my budget. People would not believe how much money you can save mm -hmm. with hiring a full planner. Yeah. The connections they have in the industry, everything like that, is just, it's just unmatched. So um, the whole process is really about educating them, really about wowing them with the facility and helping them bring their vision to life. That makes or breaks a venue. You know, if I have to park four miles and take an Uber to get to a venue, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably not going to be very happy with that <laughs> venue. Um, so we like to, you know, we like to squash those questions right away. You know, where we guess park, boom, ample parking, no problem. Everyone has a spot. So they're already, you know, kind of let off on a good note. And then we bring them into our side patio and we kind of open up the grand door and let them see the outdoor space. And that's where you get the first kind of, oh, wow moment. Um, you have them stand up on the stage where they'll say their vows to each other. Um, and just kind of create that experience in their head yeah. mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, make them excited for that day to come. Uh, and then again, just kind of rolling through the facility, showing them the way things will flow. And then afterwards, kind of, you know, decompressing with them and asking them, you know, about the concerns they have and where they're at in the process. Some people have every single vendor picked and they just need a location. Some people got engaged two days ago and have no <laughs> idea where to start. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of about setting that base for them. And letting them know kind of where to go from here. Yeah. Um, it's oh, I always love touring people who have are kind of just starting off because you're really able to kind of shape and mold how they enjoy their experience. I had a, an amazing talk with a couple um, a few days ago about the benefits of a full planner because mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they were like, I feel like we could do it ourselves. I just feel like we could do it all <laughs> ourselves. No, no, you can't, and I promise you, you can't. But but it was, you know, we had an awesome conversation about just like the benefits of hiring this vendor versus that vendor. Um, and I, I, I really try to outpour all of the experience I have with weddings into them um, mm -hmm. and let them leave with those tools for sure. Well, thank you. Uh, what are some perks to booking a wedding with you? Um, you mean other than flying in? A helicopter for your That's grand entrance. I, know. That's <laughs> I don't think everyone knows I, about. You know, I mean, we are like I've talked about. We are a full-on tourism company, yeah. so we have a fleet of helicopters that we can easily integrate into your event. Mm -hmm. uh, we can fly you in for your grand entrance. We can fly your guests during your event. I mean, what's you know, everyone kind of falls into that stoop of okay, speeches are done, dinner's done. 
What are we doing? What I don't else? really dance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really dance. What do I do? Yeah. Well, fire up the helicopters yeah. and let's get going. You know, <laughs> um, and that's and that's really that's really what we do. That's how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that's one of the biggest perks, obviously, of being mm-hmm. here is the the guest experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to some beautiful, beautiful facilities. There's some amazing venues in California, mm-hmm. as you guys well know. Yeah. But after that first five minutes of being wowed by the beauty of it, it all kind of dies down. Yeah. You know, you, you walk out onto, you know, a beachfront, you know, location and whoa, you take your pictures and then you kind of say, okay, well, what now? Yeah. yeah. So what, what's better than the what now than taking a helicopter ride later on yeah. in the evening and really bring that airport experience full circle. Mm-hmm. Obviously we, we, you know, it being part of our, our operation, you know, we don't do it during dinner service. We don't do it during your speeches. You know, your friends aren't going to miss your father daughter dance, mm-hmm. but later on in the evening when people are ready to just hang out, why not take a flight or two? Yeah. And especially corporate events, corporate events, love it. Mm-hmm. What better way to gift your employees of, you know, a beautiful Christmas party than send them all on a helicopter ride. Um, there's a lot of people that have never been in a helicopter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that will never go in a helicopter (laughs) if they don't have the opportunity like they do here. Um, You know, a lot of people don't take a trip to Maui to go on a, you know, oceanfront helicopter tour. (laughs) Um, So to be able to give it and make it very accessible for them during an event, really, uh, honestly, I would have to say, you know, obviously, I could say, you know, the lighting is beautiful and the sunsets are gorgeous and (laughs) everything like that. But really, really, when it comes down to it, really, when it comes down to it, that wow factor um, of bringing the kind of hangar experience full circle, I would say, is is the biggest benefit of booking here. I've heard the director of operations is pretty cool, too. Yeah. (laughs) I've heard that, too. Yeah. No. Yeah, I absolutely heard that. So then the helicopter rides or tours, are they included in the package already? How many are included? Absolutely. So they're not included in the package. Um, we've seen a balance of clientele from there is no way I'm getting in a helicopter <laughs> to absolutely stoked about yeah. it. Um, so we have made it an additional add-on okay. mm-hmm. option for them um, just because there's a lot of people who, if they're not interested in it, are looking for cuts in their venue rate and stuff like that. Yeah. So we just decided, you know what, let's just pick it out and make it something totally separate. Yep. So, Mike, what's next for the hangar? Are there any plans for expansion or additional construction? Um... I won't, go, I won't go into too much detail at this time about what's next, okay. um, but there are a lot of airports in the nation. <laughs> There's a lot of places Ooh, This to sounds go. promising. Um, I know. So that, that'll, kind of, that'll kind of be my shameless plug. Yeah. Right okay. Um, is I can leave it at that. There's a lot of places to go. So we'll see where we go. Well, I know and you'll you said just have that to follow along on the journey. You said that you liked <laughs> flying, and there's a lot of places in the nation, so it'll be quicker to fly to those places. So I think that's mm-hmm. more of a plug to get your license. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So we'll see. There's a lot of um, we are we are kind of spoiled here in California, being one of the largest wedding markets there is. Um, but there's a lot of other booming locations up and coming in the nation. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't mind an Orange County location and a maybe somewhere else. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where the road takes us. Um, we're, we're just going to keep on pushing here. And once we feel that um, this place is good to go, we will keep going. Well, we're excited to see what happens next. I know. We'll thank just you, do you. like maybe you'll have a package where you're venue hopping. Ooh. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Ceremony here, reception way we'll over there. We'll fly everyone over Absolutely. there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's perfect for those micro events happening, right? There you go. Exactly. Mike, thank you for your time today. We are so excited to hear about your guys' path like the journey and like the Mm -hmm. growth that we get to witness. And I'm sure the listeners will continue following you and seeing what's next for you. Is there anything else that you want to share to our listeners? No, I think we covered, I think we covered most today, but I had so much fun with you guys. It's so fun to just sit down and talk. Um, You guys are killing it out there, doing an amazing job. Uh, So I commend you guys. This This is awesome. Well, we appreciate you. Hey everybody, this is Armando from The Wedding Remix. 
Make sure that you like, share, follow, subscribe, and take care of each other out there. Until we see you next time, peace. Woo!